I've never left for a hurricane. I, I grew up in, in the age where um, my parents always taught us how to prepare for a hurricane. If you're going to stay, you prepare, and um, you prepare well. We had a neighbor who was a block away, um, Mr. Howell, 82-year-old, who had been trying all week to get out of New Orleans um, or take a rescue, but he ended up one night at the the uh, Superdome and then left, and then one night he actually spent on the railroad tracks waiting for the buses. So on, on the third night, he decided he was definitely going to get out, and this was on Friday. We met up, and he had a medical condition. He had just had a pacemaker put in two weeks before the hurricane. So we joined our forces, so to speak, and we became family. By helicopter, we were taken to the airport. And basically, the airport had been turned into a morgue. First floor was a morgue. The uh, second floor, all that had been turned into a, a triage. There were doctors everywhere, mini clinics set up. It, it almost looked like a war as people were coming in, um, just people taken off. I mean, literally plucked off their roofs from water. It looked like their, their clothes had been just um, in shreds from being in the water. That was just one group that was coming in. Then you had all the elderly that were being brought in by stretcher. And they were just laying one body after another body after another. I mean, everywhere you turned, all you saw were stretchers of, of just elderly from nursing homes. Um, it was very, um, it was very traumatic. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's just images you won't ever forget. You know, I guess being a mom, you know, you always take your snacks. I don't know what I was thinking, but I was taking some snacks with me, thinking that, um, well, it might take a long time to get to wherever we're going. So those snacks turned out to be meals for people. The little, the, the little peanut butter cookies, crackers, oh, you know. And we're not talking about a pack per person. We're talking a cracker per person. The, it, it's, it was so surreal. I keep using that word because that's the best way to describe it. The medical people that were there were trying their best, but you had so many people just coming in, just so many people, and, and they were just almost comatose. These are, it was very difficult to watch that. It was very difficult to watch it. Um, I, uh, I saw people just um, curled up in the fetal position alongside the baseboards of the, of the floor. I mean, they were just, they were just so out of it. Then you'd see elderly, they were in wheelchairs and they couldn't get to bathroom facilities. They were urinating on themselves. It was just so very sad. At the airport, it was total chaos. There was no order. Although the federal air marshals were there, um, this was not like your normal boarding of an airplane where you're asked um, you know, to leave your, your weapons behind. No one had been checked for weapons. No one had been checked for drugs. No one had been checked for anything. This was like survival mode. Everyone had just lost everything. And it didn't even matter what color you were, what economic level you were. We were all on the same level here. It was very, very, very traumatic because everyone was trying to survive. I think there's going to be some areas that are going to rebuild and some that aren't. Um, I think it's worn people out. It has worn the elderly. It's, uh, it's killed them. It's killed a lot of young people. All you have to do is open the obituaries every day. I have people that I know that died, committed suicide. It's very traumatic, 
it's, it, it, you live with it every day. Meltdowns, they may not be as much as before, but it doesn't take much to set you off, to just make you just think back, oh, goodness, it's never going to be the same. This is just way too hard. It's just way too hard. I mean, we've all had our lives put on hold for a year, going into a year and a half. And the only way to get through something like this is, you know, think positive. Have faith, for one. Definitely have faith, because if you don't, you're out of luck. You're not going to make it. You've got to believe that it's going to get better. And when I say that, it's not because the federal government or the state or the city is going to give me a few dollars. This is money will help, but it's, uh, it's an emotional thing. You know, my landmarks growing up as a kid are gone. I can't bring those back. The church that I made my first communion in, communion in, it's closed. Can't bring that back. There's so many things, so many institutions that have closed that, um, you know, it was just part of your life. It was part of you growing up. New Orleans are very, <laughs> we're very um, fierce about that. We, we, <laughs> we reminisce a lot. And we hold on to the traditions. Traditions are gone. 